Hi there, this is Patrick with lostintransit.com. Today we're going to be going through my HDR workflow. Uh, by workflow I mean we're going to be walking through my process from when I was out in the field capturing the images all the way through the different programs and different steps that I use uh, to be able to process a five-shot HDR uh, into a single image. So here we are, a little video that I took um, when I was out there this morning. This is at about uh, about six o'clock in the morning. This is the um, Swan Boathouse in Perth, Australia. You can see the water is fairly flat. Uh, it wasn't too windy. It was uh, wonderful weather. Unfortunately, not a cloud in the sky. You can see this is where the sun is coming up over to, uh, uh, to the left of the boathouse. And if we turn over to the right, you'll see that we have some uh, boats and some docks and so forth. So that's pretty much what the scene looked like uh, this morning. And I thought that it would make an interesting HDR uh, image. The reason I chose this one uh, is because it's a very simple image, very symmetrical, uh, not a whole lot of clouds. So it's an excellent candidate for a very beginner's HDR tutorial. This is going to be the first image. I'll post a few more complicated ones as the weeks go by uh, to show you how uh, the uh, workflow changes depending on how complex the image is and how much work we need to do to it. All right, so here is my camera settings. Uh, I recorded this on the iPhone, so hence the difference in, in video quality. I apologize for that. But if we take a look, the um, little um, gizmo that you see on top of my camera right over here. Uh, that is actually a GPS and I talk a little bit about it later on in the video. Um, so if we take a look here you'll notice the first thing that I am on aperture priority. This is uh, a very important. You can check over here I'm pressing down the ISO to show you my ISO. I'm on 100 which is the lotus, lowest native ISO for a, a D800. On the bracket you can see I've gone with a five shot one stop difference for each one. Uh, between each shot. If you hit quality you can see that I am shooting in raw right there and uh, that is it. On white balance I've chosen auto white balance. Not much of a difference because uh, it really doesn't matter because we're shooting raw so uh, we can change the white balance fairly easily later on during processing. So those are the, uh, the basic uh, setups of the camera. Now what I'll do is I'll take you through to uh, how I shot it. So I shut the viewfinder to avoid any stray light going in, which could affect the exposure setting of the camera. I go ahead and I take it to a f11, which is a nice, uh, nice good starting point with this lens. You can see I have my cable release attached and I will use it to fire the pictures without uh, touching the camera. So here I'm making the five shots and you could see here uh, the five shots coming up on the viewfinder. And that's how I capture it. You'll notice that the camera didn't move. I was very, very careful not to touch the camera while I was taking the pictures. You can see that it is on the tripod. You could see the uh, L bracket here uh, that, that the camera is resting on and the tripod. All right, so we just made it in from the boathouse. You can see here I have all of the pictures on an external drive and I'm just about to import them into um, Lightroom. But before I did that I wanted to show you a little bit about how I set it up. You can see here I have my fingers uh, in many of these pictures. That's done on purpose. It's not an accident. It's just telling me that I'm going to uh, start or stop a uh, HDR series of, of shots. So you can see here um, I put my fingers out here and I have one, two, three, four, five shots of a five shot HDR. So it's just an easy way to uh, to see it. So I will go ahead and import those and we'll start up uh, again as soon as Lightroom has finished. Okay, so I finished organizing the pictures. You can see them all here. I've deleted all the ones with my fingers in them and so forth and just kept the ones that were uh, um, ready for processing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through these five 
which um, I have the video on. But before I started to process these, I wanted to show you. See this little um, sign post that they have at the end of the picture. It has that because I had a GPS on uh, the camera. The benefit of that is if I click over here to the map module, you'll see exactly where I was when I took the pictures. So you could see this is the boathouse. This is where I was standing. And in the video, I panned all the way this way and I panned this way. In this particular case, it's uh, winter. The sun is coming up on this side, right behind uh, the boathouse here. Um, and I was standing here facing this way about 90 degrees from where the sun was coming. So anyway, it's just an interesting thing to be able to uh, go back historically and see exactly where those images were taken. It's a very powerful tool. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these five, which all belong to the same HDR group, and I'm going to go into the uh, develop family, to the develop module, excuse me. Okay, so here we are in the develop module. Uh, you'll see a few things. First of all, if you look up here towards the upper left, I was shooting with ISO 100, which is the load lowest native ISO of the D800. You can see the file name, the um, folder name, which I had it on, which under. I always start with the year. I follow it by the, ca by the camera and then the uh, name of the location. Okay, so here I have the image. Whenever I do these Lightroom HDR uh, images, I always do the same thing. I always start in the same order so I don't forget anything. I start under lens correction. I hit the profile correction. You can see here I was shooting this with the Nikkor 24-70. F2.8. It automatically selects it. It'll correct for uh, vignetting and some minor distortion that the lens has. I'll then go over here to color. Because HDR images are naturally contrasty, you have a very dark, you have very bright, uh, the chances of having chromatic aberrations is quite high. So I find Lightroom quite powerful at removing that. History has told me that about eight is a good uh, defringing amount to uh, to put under. I will then go down here to the cut camera calibration. I'll go to profile and I'm going to select vivid for this. I like the deeper richer colors of vivid. The profile just tells the uh, software uh, how to interpret the colors which were captured by the camera. I will leave all of these default uh, because anything that I change here photomatics is going to do some odd things when it reaches there. So um, if I was just taking a single image, I would go ahead and fine tune it for the particular image. But in this case, it being HDR, there's not really a need. I'm going to increase the clarity a little bit. And I'm going to lower the highlights, about negative 20, light up the shadows, uh, around positive 20 or so, increase the contrast to about 10. This is my standard settings. Uh, I'll usually use these settings uh, when I process an HDR image. And then if I don't like the outcome, I'll come back and start fiddling with these and process it all again. And that pretty much covers everything that I uh, do in Lightroom uh, before exporting it to Photomatix. So the last thing I'm gonna do is hit sync, which will synchronize all the changes which I just made into all the other four pictures. That way we're sure that all of them will have the same um, settings applied to it, so it'll easily be processed by Photomatix. I hit synchronize. I will export the pictures and start up again as soon as I get Photomatix up and running. One thing that I've forgotten before I export it is to check for dust. Now, if you'll see this image, um, I, I know for a fact that my sensor is quite dusty right now. It needs a cleaning. Um, if you take a look at this image, though, you really can't see much dust. Uh, I've discovered this little trick. If you look over here under the tone curve, if you go down select, you'll have linear, medium, and strong. I've created a uh, personalized set, which is called dust curve. Really, all I did was I took the curve and I made this uh, sinusoidal curve through here. And then all of a sudden, all of the spots are now clearly visible. And it's much easier to go through and clean up. Now, the great thing about shooting on a tripod and um, shooting HDR is that if there is an issue on a spot on one image, 
you're going to have it on all the images. Uh, if you have a post uh, sticking in the middle of your picture, you'll have it on all the images. So the advantage is, is that any adjustments that you make, you could apply to all of them the exact same way. So I'm going to go ahead and just fix these spots and then what I'll do is I'll synchronize again for the same uh, just to ensure that we have um, all of the spots removed from all of the imaging. Alright, so now I've selected all of the um, little spots and I've healed them uh, using Lightroom spot removal tool. And once that's finished, all I need to do is go down here and deselect the spot removal tool to remove all the little circles. Switch over here the dust curve to linear. And go ahead and sync it with all of the images. I'll synchronize it. And that's it. All of the spot, most of the spot removal uh, work has been done in Lightroom. And now I can just go over and export the files. I have set up a Photomatix uh, export process. Now you can export it directly out of Lightroom into Photomatix. I like to export it as JPEGs and then input it manually into Photomatix. The reason is because I like the conversion that uh, Lightroom does from RAW to JPEG and I'm not quite convinced of the, of the job that Photomatix does with it. So anyway, uh, I will enter into a folder uh, name. I will name it um, Boathouse HDR as a title, Swan Boathouse, and this is in Perth, Australia. I will hit export which will take a few minutes um, and we'll start it up once I get Photomatix up and running. Okay so um, Lightroom has finally finished exporting the five files. Here they are. So you could see the exposed, underexposed and overexposed shots here. You can see I have Photomatix up and running over here. I'll hit load bracketed uh, photos. I'll select all of these and manually put those in there. Hit OK. Next I have a pre-processing options dialog box. The first option is to align source images. This is important to do if you hand hold your HDR. Occasionally I do uh, when it's difficult to, to truck in a, a tripod. But in this particular case I had um, a tri I had the camera on a tripod. It didn't move so there's no need to align source images. They should be perfectly aligned. Remove ghosts. This is an important option if you have uh, birds flying in or people walking through your shot or a plane flying through your video. Anything with movement that's not the camera movement but actually a, a subject movement. Uh, you could go ahead and click here, select the area and uh, basically it'll prevent it from ghosting out. Reducing noise. This is an important one in, in HDR. HDR, because of the way that it processes the image, even at uh, low ISO of ISO 100, uh, it's going to cause some, um, uh, some noise. So we'll go ahead and take that up to about 90%. And reducing chromatic aberrations. It's important. However, I already took care of it in Lightroom, so there's no need. And I'll go ahead and hit pre-process. While it's loading and trying to denoise the pictures. Um, to explain a little bit about why I chose Photomatix, there are plenty of HDR uh, programs out there. I've tried uh, a whole boatload of them. I like the way Photomatix uh, processes the image. I like the uh, feel and the style that it gives, but it's a very subjective uh, point of view. In other words, the best thing for you to do is try out the different ones, see which ones you like and go ahead and use it. Uh, almost all of them have a free trial period of at least a month, so it's very easy for you to download them all, give it a try, and uh, decide for yourself and your style of photography which HDR program is best for you. So I'm going to give this a few minutes to go ahead and continue processing, and we'll pick up as soon as it's finished. Okay, so um, Photomatix is finally finished with the initial processing and this is what we have. Um, 
you can zoom in to different uh, regions. Sometimes you have to because if you see um, on this photomatics preview pane, sometimes you see some weird artifacts that really aren't there in the picture. So you can see over here on the right hand side in the zoomed version that the uh, uh, removal of the chromatic aberrations seems to have worked quite well. I'm very happy with that. I don't have much uh, color fringing there at all. So overall very very happy with what Photomatics has done with it thus far. If we look over here on the left on the adjustments, um, you, usually what I do is I don't go you know from top to bottom here uh, because what I found is uh, things like color saturation, luminosity and so forth will be affected by some of the settings that we have down here. So just from trial and error I've learned to start off with strength. Now you can go down to almost no strength to make it a very natural looking HDR or you could pump it up a little bit and uh, or have anything in between. So we're going to go with something along the lines of that. For this particular image, color saturation I'm going to skip, luminosity I'm going to skip. Detail contrast is an interesting one. What it'll do is it'll increase the contrast in a very minute way. So it measures it based upon the number of pixels that it alters. And in this particular case, it's very, very small alterations. You can see here in the zoomed up version, you know, if I go, if I make a massive correction, you'll be able to, to see it. But uh, if not, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty minute, but a very subtle change, but it can make a big impact. Lighting adjustments. Really what I use this for is to make sure I don't have any halos. Um, I adjust it until I see that I don't have any halos in the buildings. I'm not going to have much here. You can see I don't have much of a halo. The sun was rising over here, so all of this is very, very normal and very natural looking. So I'm quite happy with it uh, all the way pushed over. Smoothing highlights, what it'll, do, what it'll do is if I zoom in on a highlighted version here and I increase this slider, what you'll see is that it'll smooth out um, all of the uh, the very very bright end of the spectrum. It'll smooth it all out. You got to be careful with it if you have a lot of details in the bright end. Uh, smoothing out the highlights is going to lose a little bit of that detail. White point, I'm going to leave it for there for now. I'm going to skip over to black point. I start off taking it to about the same point that the white point is at and seeing how that looks. That's looking a bit better. Let's see if I take it up a bit more. I could do that, yeah. Okay. Uh, gamma is basically another way of saying luminosity. I really haven't been able to find much of a difference between this and lumino luminosity scale. Temperature, if you want to take it nice and warm, or if you want to take it nice and on the cooler end of things. I'll have it just slightly on the cool end. Micro smoothing, it's very minute changes, but uh, if we take a look at these waters, micro smoothing will have a small impact on it, but rather small. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Saturation of highlights, saturation of shadows, I never touch. Shadow smoothness, smoothness is the same thing as the highlights, but for the shadow region. So if I zoom in here and I start uh, bringing this up close to where the highlight smoothness was, we should be okay. Shadows clipping I'm not going to touch. So generally speaking, this is I like this image. It's a very uh, symmetrical image, uh, so it breaks all kinds of photography rules, but aside from that, from the colors and, the, and what Photomatix has done with it, I'm quite happy. So I'm going to go ahead and process this and uh, when it's finished I will open it up in uh, Adobe Photoshop CS6 and we'll continue with the processing there.